Hi, welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Today I have a Garrett GT1752 supercharger as found on quite a lot of things. This one is actually from a Saab. So if you have a, a General Motors vehicle like a, an Opel or a Vauxhall, you've probably got one of these in your car. This is obviously from a petrol engine and you can see with a little bit of extra illumination, how worn this turbo is. So you can see there, this is the actual exhaust side of the turbo. And you see that impeller vein? Yeah, the impeller and the veins, they should not be moving like that. So for those of you that don't know, let's just have a quick rundown of what a turbo is. It basically, spools up, um, it pressurizes your, the air that goes into the engine and the denser the air means it, the, the engine can actually put more fuel into the mixture. I think it's a 4.7, you can correct me if I'm wrong, mixture of um, fuel to air. And that means you can just basically get more power out of your engine. Cut a, a long story short. Um, and how it works is that air Let's 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 start from it's very it's weird it's like a, a, a hen and um, egg situation here because one thing drives the other so let's just simplify it when your engine's running it's pushing out exhaust gases through here this intake this in turn hits that vein I showed you earlier that impeller and it's spinning this around and blowing out of here to your exhaust pipe now that additional spinning causes this end, the intake end, to start sucking air in harder and then blows it out through here, which then goes into your intercooler where it's cooled down and then drawn back into the top of your engine, back into your injection system and then into your cylinders. So this centre part here where the impellers are all connected seems to be commonly called the cartridge now because you can replace this centre piece. And you can see these ports on the sides of it. There's a few of them. So these are for oil and water. So for example, this one is water comes in here and then goes out, sorry, let's get this right. Oil comes in this top one here. Just about see it there. So oil gets fed through, through these seals and then the oil just gets dumped back out of this into the sump of the engine. And on the back and the front, you see this one and this one these are here to keep the turbocharger cool because obviously your exhaust gases can be coming out at, that, well, I guess well, well over a thousand degrees Celsius easily. So that would absolutely cook everything if it didn't have that water cooling. So that's why it's so important to have your car serviced regularly when you have a turbocharger. So I've got a few tools with me because we're going to tear this down because you could see it's, it's actually a knackered one, but I'm going to be reconditioning this at some point. So I'm going to be wanting to replace this cartridge so we can have a look at it. So I've just got basic tools here. Luckily, it doesn't seem like you need many, it's certainly not for this Garrett model. So we've got in my hand, I've got an eight millimeter ratchet socket, sorry. A ratchet, it's not a socket mind is it? It's I guess a wrench. Don't know what you want to call these ones. First screw out. Actually while I'm at it let's just get rid of this oil um, pipe because it's right in the way. This is an E11. An E being this kind of strange star-shaped socket and that's the star-shaped screw that goes in it. Or star-shaped bolt. Just whip that out and hopefully it won't dump a bunch of oil on my bit of mat here. Just wipe that down, it is a little bit oily. So the reason I you know, got this out of the car, darn it, look I broke the gasket here. Yeah, that's annoying. Have to find a new gasket when I replace this. So the reason I've got this is that I was driving my car a few weeks ago and it kicked out a couple of puffs of smoke on the motorway on the overrun. I thought no more about it 
but then when I parked up, I parked it up and then sort of went away for a couple of weeks and then came back. Boy, when I came back, something interesting happened. Basically, the, I turned the engine on and the car essentially just put out the most dense white cloud of smoke I've ever seen. And it was only running for a few seconds, you know. It's, it's almost, it's instantaneous, this thing. It just, it completely, you know, covered my driveway with smoke. And, you know, it looked like your house was on fire. So I knocked that all off check the oil level and everything in the car and then found it's completely empty so it obviously turned into something that just was forcing oil straight out of the back of the car now when it did the little kicks of smoke on the motorway that time though I did check the oil level when I got back when it was fine so it just shows you how quickly it once you lose your oil seals in your turbo this thing just literally just drinks the oil straight out of your sump and just blows it straight out the exhaust However, there can be worse scenarios, and the worst scenario is if you if you're unfortunate and the car actually starts burning. So if it's so if it's blowing it out the exhaust side here, then it's hitting your exhaust manifold and vaporizing and putting out that smoke. However, if it starts sucking in the oil on the front side, which this was doing, but not not too much the engine itself can start running on this oil. And this is going to be more common on a diesel engine, which is obviously designed for running an oil. Let's get this top off now. Ah! I did try to degrease this. So there's a bunch of liquid in here. There we go. I don't really want to damage this actuator. What I'll do is I'll actually just undo this. Let's, or is it safe enough? It's probably okay, really, is it? It's probably okay. Right, so there's our chewed up veins here. So if you're really, again, unlucky, and these veins snap off, they'll get sucked into your engine and get stamped by your into the top of your pistons and then that can cause all sorts of trouble so I'm hoping I haven't got too much damage like that I'm just gonna see if I can oh, I'm just gonna try to get that actuator off but really it's it's on there solid it's not worth trying to remove at this point as long as it doesn't get damage right let's just crack on with the exhaust side Unfortunately, the way these are made, I can't get my ratchet into these, so I have to resort to manual wrenching. Might be able to. Now, for certain cars, so like this Saab, this is a Saab 95, so they're using this Garrett 17, GT17 supercharger, they're quite common. Um, sorry, turbocharger. They're quite common. You'll uh, find them in a lot of cars. And they do a higher performance model, which has got a different turbo. And the different turbo, it's the, I think it's a Mitsubishi TDO4, TCO4, something like that. And it's actually a better, stronger unit. And you can actually replace the unit in the, in the car with that model. And you'll get all the benefits of it being a tougher, longer lasting supercharger. And if you're that way inclined and you notify your insurance company and the like, you can actually tell the car, get the engine remapped to understand that it's got that turbo in it. And you'll actually get another, I think it's like quite a lot, like 30, uh, at least 30 brake horsepower, something like that, out of it. And that's without having to replace the intercooler or any of the other pipes so you can get a little almost a free upgrade if you're uh, that way inclined okay so will this come out it's not looking like it wants to just yet so the bolts are undone Ooh. 
I'm guessing it just might need a little bit of persuasion. Okay, let's get this out of the way before something gets damaged that we don't need damaged because this clearly is going to need a bit more bashing to get out. Okay, I'm having difficulty getting this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to put a bar through here and smack it. See if we can smack it out by hitting that impeller. We know that this is all damaged and we're not going to reuse any of that anyway. Mm -hmm. 